The 51st Annual Week of the Young Child is here. This event is sponsored by the National Association for the Education of Young Children to celebrate young children, their families, and the educators and community members who support them. The Maine Department of Education is proud to join early childhood professionals from across the country in this celebration. The phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, rings true today more than ever. Early care and education are essential components in post-pandemic return to work efforts. Research has illuminated the critical role of high quality care and learning in brain development. Early childhood educators in collaboration with families are laying the foundation on which a child's life will be built. The future quite literally lies in their hands. This is a lofty task, but many hands make the work light. The Maine Department of Education would like to celebrate this important work by introducing you to some of the roles in the field of early childhood education. In this video series, you will meet Mainers who are making a difference in the lives of young children and their families. The work can be challenging at times, but you will see that it is a labor of love for these amazing individuals. Let's begin with Music Monday. Music is important to young children's development. It is not only a way to experience and express joy, but it also supports self-regulation, builds language, and supports literacy development. Music and songs stick in our minds and aid our memories. Most adults still recall a song or two from their childhood. Today, you will meet Mainers who are enriching the lives of young children and their families through music in schools and the community. First, we will meet Tiare Messing. Tiare is an instructor for Music Together through the Midcoast Music Academy. I'm Tiare Messing. I am a retired teacher of 20 plus years experience, um, primarily in special education. But having been retired, of course, I still miss working with the children, which is why we go into teaching, is working with the te children. And so um, what I have done as a retirement, very part-time position, is there is a group in uh, the Midcoast, Maine, the Midcoast Music Academy, who provide um, all kinds of musical experiences, lessons um, for a lot of the local kids from little through college. And they uh, have a class through a national organization called Music Together, um, where they hold classes with parents and with children. So I am a trained Music Together teacher and um, had been given a few classes. And when this started up, uh, I am currently teaching the preschool class at St. George School. So it's just once a week, but it's little guys and it's lots of fun. And that's why we do it because it's lots of fun. What benefits do you think the music brings to the kiddos? Well, as Fred Rogers, our beloved Mr. Rogers used to say, the younger they are, the more this is true, but I think it's true for all our kids. They learn through play. Their work is play. And with the music, particularly with the little ones, the intent is not to get them to achieve, it's not to get them to perform, but to essentially play with the music. And we play with rhythm and we play with tones and we're able to introduce multicultural aspects when some of the scales aren't the same they're used to hearing. We try to prevent, prevent present um, basically a smorgasbord of a whole lot of different things that music can be. And so there may be the boy in the corner who loves to bang on those drums and that's his thing. And there may be somebody else who loves to dance with the scarves. And we can provide a whole range of opportunities to play with the music and thereby learn from the music. But the kids can be who they are and attached to that part that appeals to them, which is what I think makes it so successful. So when you started your career path, what drew you to working with children? Did you always work with young children or did you no, work with older you know, grades? People always ask, what's your favorite age group? I honestly don't have one. I was the oldest of five. So I always had kids. My mother was a teacher. So there's probably a genetic component there. Uh, um, but even my first jobs in high school was working at a daycare center. So the attraction of working with young people, and again, probably because 
they are spontaneously joyful, spontaneously fun, um, spontaneously playful. As an adult, you can still hook into that. So I guess the inclination to do that was always there. And to be honest, going into education was a second career for me. Um, I went to college and then I was kind of in um, public health, health education, working in a women's clinic. Uh, um, but then I had children and I started volunteering in the school and then it just kind of slide right into that. That's wonderful. So if you were to, you know, speak about your most favorite part of working with the young kids, um, what would you say that that is? Enjoying their spontaneity. They're honest. You know, they are what they are. And if they're excited about something, you're going to see that and be able to participate in that. I hope that whoever may choose this finds the joy that I've been able to find. Next, we will meet Caitlin Geishaker, an elementary music teacher in MSAD 11. My name is Caitlin Geishaker, and I teach K through five general music with a four and five chorus in two of our elementary schools in MSAD 11. Great. And can you talk a little bit about what you do with your younger kiddos to introduce them to music and your K three students? Absolutely. So in kindergarten uh, and first grade, we do a lot of exploratory uh, movement to music. We talk about what the beat is and how to move to a steady beat. We talk about high and low when it comes to pitch. Um, and then as we progress through their grade levels, we can start adding names to the notes um, and the pitches that they're singing or playing. Um, we do a lot of instruments, um, kid-friendly instruments, smaller rhythm instruments, or um, single tone instruments that they can play. And so they can hear and make the connection between what they're reading and what they're playing um, or what they're singing and what they're playing also. Um, so there's a lot of movement, a lot of singing, a lot of instruments. That's great. Can you talk a little bit about your career path that led you to where you are today? So when I started teaching, I started in a um, six through 12 program at Winthrop Middle School and High School. Um, and I had, uh, I started off doing mostly choral music and a general music uh, class for sixth grade. Um, as their numbers changed and fluxed, the job also changed and fluxed so that we were, I ended up teaching mostly middle school general music and some high school choral. Um, then I came to Gardner or to MSAD 11 um, in 2010, and I've been here ever since. Great. What drew you to working with young children in the field of music? Um, I just, I was drawn to their energy. They have just, they come in, they're joyful, they're excited. Um, and you just can like hone into that energy and it keeps you going. Um, I see most of my younger students at the end of the day where energy can be at its lowest. So it's just nice to be able to feed off of that. Um, they're also not afraid to make mistakes. They love to try new things and they're very receptive to, um, uh, change. So if I say, oh, no, we're, that was great, but we actually need to do this, they're very receptive to that feedback and they're willing to try it again. And um, so it's great that they're not really afraid to make mistakes because they know that they're going to learn. Eva Tartaglia and Barbara Paschke are members of the Portland Symphony Orchestra, who also support young children's music development. I, um, the PSO um, started this program. They were looking for community outreach um, and they started this program. Allison Chomsky, who at the time was the classroom music teacher at Reiki School in Longfellow, um, worked with the, the, the classroom teachers and with the symphony to develop a program to use music to support the teachers in the school. So I'm the director of artistic operations. So I help with basically everything about having the orchestra on stage. Um, and that includes our discovery concerts. These were piloted about five or six years ago and um, they're just amazing. So they are a family concert. So we have them on weekends for families of all generations, but then kids can come and have about a one hour interactive experience um, where they get to actually 
play some of the instruments they're going to be hearing. They get to talk one on one with some of our players as they wander around the lobby. They get to conduct some of our musicians. So they have all of these very individual interactive experiences, uh, get some energy out as well. And then they can sit down to about a 45, 50 minute program. So I think it's a really innovative way to expose kids to music possibly for the first time um, especially like full orchestral music because we're not just asking them to sit down and pay attention for 35 minutes of Mozart you know we're actually really designing a, a two hour or so experience for them and for the whole family um, and we we also make sure that the show is very enjoyable for uh, families as well so we have a lot of grandparents and parents that come and uh yeah, everybody leaves after two hours having really um, gotten like a full experience. Can you talk to me? I heard from Barbara about what drew her um, to working with the young children and, and kiddos. What drew you to this work? Yeah, uh, so I grew up playing clarinet. I didn't have a ton of like early elementary music education. Um, I didn't really get into it until I would say like high school age. So when I get to see kids faces light up, uh, between ages, you know, five and nine, I think that's just amazing because I, I didn't have that experience necessarily. Um, and I, yeah, I studied music through college, through grad school. And then uh, that led me in the direction of uh, orchestra administration and operations. And I love that I can use a side of my brain that is um, fairly technical and uh just working through a lot of information and then I can use that to create an artistic product uh, and help facilitate musicians to do that. So, yeah. That's really great. Um, for both of you ladies would really like to know, you know, what are those best parts for you of working with the, the kiddos that you're working with? You <laughs> I get to go first. There are no bad parts. <laughs> I just can't get, I, um, the best part is seeing the, joy in this world the, the in this crazy world that we have uh, um, i would be leaving when parents were picking up their kids and several times i got stopped in the parking lot by parents some of whom could barely speak english and said excuse me are you with the pso and i said yes and they said oh thank you so much that is the day my child wants to come to school and there is nothing <laughs> nothing more rewarding than that that's on every level that you just get back so much more than you give yeah thank so you true. that's powerful yeah for me it's uh seeing the faces when a kid hears particularly a live orchestra for the first time uh because there's nothing like the experience of having that wave of sound come at you uh and they may have only heard music through speakers previously or maybe on a piano but they're you can't recreate that experience uh and they are really transfixed um and i think that's just so incredibly special um and hopefully something they carry with them for the rest of their lives i mean we're not looking for everyone to become a musician necessarily but if everyone can uh listen and enjoy it and uh take that through the rest of their lives like I think we I think we have a success right there so teaching kids is the most rewarding thing there is in the world how about that Sarah Welch is a speech and language pathologist who helps young children develop their speech and language skills which they need for communication and singing songs as well my name is Sarah Welch I'm a speech language pathologist and uh, currently I provide speech services for three to five year olds and manage the speech team uh, for the Southern Maine Administrative Collaborative. And can you talk a little bit about your career journey that's brought yeah. you to this position? Absolutely. Um, I started providing speech services where I lived in Vermont about 12 years ago, and I knew pretty much right away that I wanted to work with young kids, with uh, three to five-year-olds, ideally. Uh, and I did that for the most part. Um, until I moved to Maine about <clears throat> six years ago now and worked with the pre-K through 12 uh, speech team at um, Orchard Beach, which was a wonderful learning experience. And then I joined SMAC and helped them build their team, the Southern Maine Administrative Collaborative, and helped them build out their team of speech language pathologists providing primarily three to five-year-old services. 
That's great. What drew you to want to work with kiddos in that young age range? Um, I, I love this age. Um, they are right in the middle of the most important part of language development. And they're just like little sponges, just ready to soak up everything that you have to offer them. Uh, and it feels really organic. Like I can just sit down on the floor with a kiddo and play with them and work whatever language or communication goals I have into the play, into whatever it is that they want to be doing in that moment. That's what I love about it. We hope that you enjoyed the video and meeting a few of the people who enrich the lives of young children through music. If you are interested in learning more about positions working with young children, please reach out to a member of the DOE Early Learning Team. We will be recording a new video each day this week and hope that you will check back to meet more individuals involved in the care and learning of young children.